Essential Space Engineers mods you need to use. Whilst creating the mod list for my Space Engineers server I'll be hosting very soon, I've been testing many mods and let me tell you, some of them are absolute game changers. So today I'll be going through some of the best ones I've found. So without further ado, let's begin. The first mod we'll be looking at is AI Enabled. AI Enabled adds a new block called the Robot Factory, which allows you to construct yourself some AI companions. Now there are three different variants as seen here, Repair, Scavenger and Combat. And once you've selected the variant, the model you want and the name of it, press Build and it will construct your own AI companion. You can see here, this is the Repair variant and he's immediately going to repair this damage over here at the front of the base. Now they don't just repair blocks, they'll also grab components from your base in order to weld the blocks you've placed on your grid. So you can see I've placed some blocks here and I'm just waiting for our robot companion over here to go and weld them up. There you go. Now he's just grabbing some resources. There you go. He's welded up another block. So to get some more. Look at him go. I don't know how they prioritize which blocks they weld up or which blocks they repair. It just seems to kind of do some random ones on the base every time. But when it comes to welding up blocks or repairing things, I'll take all the help I can get. The next variant we have is the scavenger bot. Now, whereas the repair bot is going around doing its own thing, the scavenger bot follows you around. And occasionally they'll spawn in items for you. For example, this one has just spawned a plushie for me. But for the most part, I don't really think scavengers are worthwhile to use. Although he did just spawn a superconductor in for me, so I guess that's fine. <laughs> And lastly, we have the combat drone, and I think you can all guess what these guys do. I should probably mention that these require space credits in order to be built. All three models do need space credits to be built, but the combat drone requires 50,000 space credits, which is five times more than the repair drone, so just be aware when you're building these that you need space credits. As you can see here, the bots fight against other armed opponents, like the turrets on the base here, and they're also shooting at the crew of this base. This is also a good time to mention the Crew Enabled mod, which is an add-on for AI Enabled, which is the mod here that's adding NPC crews to bases and ships. It will do this for any non-player faction's base or ship, having a random chance to add NPCs to them for every chair and control seat on it, and these NPCs will protect the grid from hostile players. Now, these guys have more features than just going out and doing the one job that they're meant to do. If you press F on them, it brings up this little menu here. You can see that you can issue commands. For example, I've got go to here. So if I go and press over there, he should now walk over there. Good. If I go here, press go to again, I can now make him walk back over there. You can also set these NPCs to follow patrol routes. As you can see, I've set this NPC here to walk between two points. And you can save multiple patrol routes so you can use them again later. Like most mods, this mod is highly configurable. By default, you can only have two AI companions, but you can quite easily change this and build an army of welding or combat drones for you to use. Now all we need to do is prevent the AI from taking over and replacing me. And I've heard there's a really easy way you at home can do this. And it's quite simple. All you have to do is click the like button. Advanced Welding is a utility mod that ironically has two of its three features are based around grinding. The first feature of Advanced Welding is that you can go up to a block and if you hold control, you see at the bottom it says grind a block to detach it. So now if I grind this block, rather than grinding the block down, this block is now detached from the entire grid. This is useful for things like batteries and hydrogen tanks that lose their capacity when they're ground down. This way you can transfer the power stored in this battery to another grid. Or for example, with this hydrogen tank here, it's now detached from the grid. And now I'm able to pick up this hydrogen tank using a ship and move it somewhere else. So this hydrogen tank had about 36% hydrogen in it, so I can now transfer that over to the main grid over here. So that's where the next part of the mod comes in, weld pads. So if I place a weld pad on here, and I'm gonna place a weld pad on this conveyor here, Weld pads are a bit like merge blocks so that when you push them against each other, the two grids are merged together. Now the advantage of these is that they don't take up a block space like merge blocks do, or two block space I guess. They're cheaper than merge blocks, but they're only one time use, which is a downside. You also get a little UI that pops up when the merge blocks are near each other. See at the bottom I've got these the details of how close they are so I can help line them up. So you can see I'm about a meter out. And there you go, no fanfare whatsoever. The two grids are now merged together. So you can now see this hydrogen tank has access to everything else on the base. And the hydrogen from this hydrogen tank will also be able to access by the base. And we can do the same for this battery here. If we bring it over to this side of the base. I'm going to place it on this corner, get a weld pad and place it on there. And there you go. It's simple as that. No fanfare. It's just now attached to the base. Now the third feature of advanced welding, like I said earlier, is a grinding feature. If you go up to a block you want to grind, you hold right click, you can see it says precision grind locked to small curved conveyor. Now if I grind now, you can see that I ground down the conveyor. However, I'm unable to grind down any of the other blocks. Now this only happens whilst I'm holding right click. So I'm not holding right click now. So if I grind now, you see it just does stuff. This is extremely useful because I've got a tier three grinder here that I don't accidentally grind extra blocks I don't want to grind. I definitely don't want to grind down this cargo container. So if I go to the other side and say, I just want to grind down this one conveyor, right click to lock. And I can't grind down the cargo container by accident. Overall, Advanced Welding is a very useful mod that has a few small quality of life features that make a massive difference to your game. Production Quota is a mod that all of you need to be using, as if you go to one of your assemblers and scroll down on it, you see you've got the quota list here. Now this is a quota list of every single component in the game, so for example, if I wanted to have a quota for construction components, I click on it, press 100, press set, and now the base will always try to get 100 construction components in stock at all times. So if I go to production, you can see it's not queued up anything at the moment, but I'd imagine that's because we have enough construction components. We have 16k, so that's fine, so let's find something we don't have a lot of. So we only have 37 reactor components. So if I go to control panel, find reactor components in this list, there you go, reactor components. I'm going to set that to 1000. 
thousand and press set. And now if you go to production, you can see it's queued up a thousand construction components. Now, because these are on cooperative mode, all of the other assemblers will also be queuing them up. So this is probably the best way to do it is put the quota on your main assembler so that the jobs get distributed out to the other assemblers on your ship. You can enable cooperative mode if you go to your assembler and you can tick it here. Obviously, you want it enabled on all the assemblers apart from the main one. So this is the master. So this doesn't have cooperative mode on. If I go to one of the other ones, these will have cooperative mode on so that they pull jobs from the main one in order to make it more distributed across the system. Now, I'm sure there's going to be that one guy in the comments. He goes, ah, well, actually, you can do this with scripts. Uh, yes, you can. I'm not going to disagree with you. The only thing I'll say is that generally this mod is less laggy than the script because the mod changes the actual game's code. It's a lot better at it. And also, this is just much easier than using the script. I just add the mod and then I can go here and do it. I don't have to get a programmer block. I don't have to paste in any code. I don't have to edit any custom data. I just go here. I say I want 10,000 steel plays on stock at all times set and it'll just do it in the background. Another mod to go alongside this, as they're kind of related, is projector to assembler. And projector to assembler is quite simple, as you see I've got this projection of the base, so we removed the hydrogen tank earlier. So if we go to the terminal for the projector, scroll right down to the bottom, you've got a button here that says send to assembler and send missing items. If I press send missing items, this should queue up the hydrogen tank components and the hydrogen thruster components. So if I go there, production. So this should be all the components required to build all the blocks that are missing on this grid. And once I have the resources, I can quite easily weld up the blocks on my base. Or maybe the AI friends I built earlier could do it for me. Smooth Voxels is a mod that, as you can imagine, smooths out the voxels in Space Engineers. Now you're probably thinking, well, why do I need Smooth Voxels? Now, for those rover enjoyers out there, you're probably thinking, this sounds amazing. But for those of you who don't drive rovers all the time, let me explain. In the background, you should be seeing some comparisons of before and after with the mod, showing how it smooths out the terrain. Now, for some reason in Space Engineers, when voxels generate, they're never quite smooth. Mountain sides are especially bad for this, as they're kind of all bumpy and impossible to get up. So if you want to drive a rover up a mountain face, it's just impossible. Here we have this green rover I've got, and you see, oh, it's a bit difficult, and it's all these crags and you see this little bit sticking out here and I'm just never going to be able to look I'm stuck already and you're probably thinking oh just find a different route uh yeah um what route <laughs> it's bumpy like this all the way up and now I have the mod on and just just look at this look how absolutely beautiful this is to drive there is no bumps there's no random bits of rock sticking out it's just a perfectly smooth surface all the way to the top I cannot tell you how amazing this is do you know what the best part is you can remove and add this mod at will if you've created a world and you really think oh I need smooth voxels you can just add the mod in and it just flattens all the terrain it keeps all the damage that's already there it just gets rid of all those bumps and knocks in the terrain so now when you crash your rover you no longer get to blame the bumpy terrain it's now all your fault and if you're a fan of smooth voxels, then you'll also be a fan of this smooth transition to me talking about my multiplayer server. All the mods listed in this video will be on the server, as these mods are the best of the best. So if you're interested in joining, check out the link to my Discord in the description for more information. Aerodynamic Physics is one of those mods that really does completely change the game. We recently did a challenge where we built planes using the Aerodynamics mod, and it completely changed the way you build. So if I spawn in a ship that isn't very aerodynamic, just give it a fly, you can see as I'm pushing forward, my nose is tipping down, so ooh, I wasn't supposed to crash that earlier, but you kind of get the idea. Ooh. You can see they're a bit difficult to fly. This is because, as I said, it's adding drag to your ships, which means that you kind of need to make them more aerodynamic. The bonus of this is, if I take this plane off, see I've got my thruster on now, so I'm going to go up a little, up a little bit, and if I release, I kind of glide along. I don't fall straight out of the sky like you normally would. So this makes building things like planes actually a viable option. It also makes it more realistic as when you're flying, as you can see now, if I turn my thruster off, I slow down due to wind resistance. In the base game, you only slow down due to gravity pulling you towards the surface. With this mod, your ship will slowly slow down when you're not thrusting forward and glide along. Obviously, Obviously how well it does is depending on how aerodynamic your ship is. Now obviously if you make a ship that's large enough you don't need to worry as much about aerodynamic physics as by the sheer force of the thrust on it it won't affect you as much. However with that there is also a second feature of this mod and that's if you're going up to fasten the wind resistance for too long your ship will slowly start to heat up. Now this isn't just cosmetic because if you go over the speed limit for too long the heat gets so high and slowly the ship will come apart due to the heat. I think that was a hydrogen tank that just went oh and that's another one and there you go and now we're gone. Now I will say one thing, whilst this is the essential mod list for Space Engineers, this mod isn't for everyone. If you want your extra realism, if you want your ships to fly slightly more realistically, if you want the ability to build planes and stuff like that, go for it, this mod is for you. If you don't want to think about aerodynamics or you're building your ships, then don't use it, it's as simple as that. But I feel like at least everyone needs to try this mod at least once because it is amazing. The next mod on the list is called Mechanical Keybinds. Now, Mechanical Keybinds is another one of those mods that replaces the need for a script by doing something much, much better. As you can see, I'm in the cockpit of this shit here. Now, if I press 1 on my keyboard, that enables the control of this arm. So if I press E, that moves it to the right. And if I press Q, it moves it to the left. If I press W or forward, it moves the arm forward. And I press S, it moves it backwards. And lastly, if I press C, it moves the drill down. And I press space, and it brings it back up. 
So the way this mod works is quite simple. If I go to my control panel and search arm, you'll see I've got all the blocks used in the arm. So obviously I've named everything based on what it does. So the two forward pistons are called forward. So if I scroll down to the bottom of the piston, they've got this extra section here where it says the bind. So bind forward and backwards. So obviously forward and backwards is W and S on PC. I've got the input reverted to give me the control I want. And then I you set the speed here. So currently I've got the speed set to 1.25 meters a second. Same for the down piston, exactly the same setup, except I've got the bind set to up and down. And then for the rotor, I've got it on roll, which is Q and E to roll the ship left and right. I could have this on left and right using the mouse, but I just find it easier to do with the roll. What you want to do is once you've set all the controls in here, you want a cockpit as well. You want to select all the blocks and then add them to a group, which I've called arm control here. And then when you go to your toolbar, right at the bottom, you've got control mechanics. So now I've got control mechanics off. If I press one to turn that on and I should now have control of the arm. Turn on my drill, use Q to move it across, C to move it down. And there you go, easy. Now, obviously this doesn't just have to be used to arms. This can be used to control any mechanical blocks, such as pistons, rotors, and hinges. So you can use this to put any kind of control Traptions. you can imagine with that you can bind any movement action you want to any function on a mechanical block and hey if i can manage to do it i'm pretty sure you can too so the next mod is a mod that only came out recently and that's the undo mod so if i place a line of blocks here and now i'm going to press ctrl and z on my keyboard and bam it's gone revolutionary place some more blocks and then ctrl z ctrl z ctrl z amazing also works with paint so if i grab this yellow paint here oh no i've accidentally painted my entire base red ctrl z bam back to normal in fact this feature is so good i wouldn't be surprised if they add this feature to the base game very very soon now obviously this mod is creative only but i'm not going to refuse another tool that makes building easier are there any other essential mods you think I've missed? Let me know with a comment below. And if this video is helpful to you, like and subscribe for more Space Engineers content.